Uh, is it recording? Yes. All right. So this is a hot topic episode. It's not, it's super casual and it's just a conversation like about one specific topic. So they're about 30 minutes long. I put it on YouTube and then I will put it out on the podcast platforms as well. So today I'm talking with Mr. Chaz. Uh, He is one of the first people that I had on my podcast when I started. I found him on TikTok and I loved him so much. And I was so excited. My mom was so excited. She's like, I was like, mom, guess who I have on the podcast? Like Mr. Chaz. She's like, no way. So his episode that we did on toddlers and tantrums and timeouts is episode number eight. So way back. Um, And so now I asked him to come on for a hot topic episode and talk all about whining. Mm -hmm. So the reason I wanted to talk about whining is because I find there's so much information out there about tantrums and how to react in a tantrum, how to prevent them, but nobody talks about whining. And I was looking at your TikToks the other day and you had one on whining and I was like, yes, this is such a good topic because I find whining more irritating and frustrating than an actual tantrum. Um, It's like never ending and I don't know how to respond to it. So I thought we could go over that today. Um, So yeah, the first thing I wanted to ask you about is why children whine <laughs> <laughs> well you know it's not just children that whine this it's is true adults sometimes too you know and sometimes we whine about whining yeah. right and you know it really just it comes from a a want and a want and a want that a child has a want or a need that is in them and they're trying to communicate it but they also dysregulate it just not when i say dysregulated it just means that it means that they're not regulated that they're and dysregulated doesn't necessarily mean um just uh angry or sad but it could also mean like really excited just kind of not in a regulated state and so Typically, when children are whining, it's something that they're wanting and they're feeling some kind of emotion. And it comes out like, I want a cookie. But behind it, it is, you know, the maybe a feeling of hunger, a feeling of like, I really want it and I really see it. And oh, if I could just have that cookie, I can I can taste it in my this sweet goodness in my mouth. And I almost, and, and maybe I even know that my you know, my, my parent is going to say no. And so I'm already kind of like, even a little bit more like frustrated. And so it comes out like this, I want a cookie, right? And a lot of times, you know, we will talk about how to stop a behavior, um, how to, you know, stop doing this, or how, how do I get them to stop? Um, when a lot of times, it's a lot more helpful for us to think about, hmm, how can I build now, how can I replace this behavior with a different behavior? How can I build a, a skill? Because really it comes from all of kind of the misbehaviors and the behaviors that really cons- concern us or irritate us really come from um, unmet needs and untaught skills. And, you know, talking about whining, when you think about it, all it, all it really is is this child wanting something feeling an emotion about it. And so that's what's coming out in their tone. Um, and just, just, and, and so it comes out whining. And so what do we need, you know, what's the thing to teach them, right? It's really, and this is a long-term goal, right? So this isn't going to be like, after you listen 30 minutes, I'm going to implement this. Yeah. And then the next day, my child's never going to whine again. no. <laughs> There's very, 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 very few things like that when it comes to growing people in general, not just children, but even training adults in a job, right? But you really want to focus on, you know, teaching them how to advocate for themselves more appropriately, more effectively, more pro-socially. And so that's really what you want to focus on and kind of how you want to think about it when the whining happens. and I would be curious to know, we don't have to talk because I know this is like a 30 second hot take, but I'd be curious to know what about the whining really, you know, creates that emotional reaction in you 
Um, Cause you said the tipper tantrums like are fine. Like you can be screaming and crying and, and, and throwing things. I'm cool with that. But the whining is honestly, is, you. I think like I was saying, there's so much information about tantrums and I'm more educated when it comes to tantrums. So I understand like the co-regulation thing. So when he starts to tantrum and escalate, I like de-escalate, I go down because I know that that's going to help him get to that level and co-regulate. So with whining, I think I, you almost feel helpless because you don't know how like, when is this going to end? I like, for example, he loves to whine to get fruit snacks. And I know that he's not able to have a fruit snack at that time, or he just finished some. And, you know, now we're going to wait till after dinner to have fruit snacks. So as soon as he asks, and I'm like, no, like after dinner, we'll have a fruit snack or whatever. It's like, food snack, and like following me around. And so I'm like, I think the irritability comes or irritableness comes from just me not knowing how to respond in that situation. Whereas in a tantrum situation, I'm better equipped. So when he's whining, I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do. And is it ever going to end? Because I don't want to give in to give him a fruit snack because it's going to reinforce that that's going to get him what he wants. So lately what I've been trying to do is try and get his attention because I feel like when they're in this state of whining they're not really listening to what you're saying Mm -hmm. so I try and get him to focus on me and say use your words like how you ask for what you want because if for example if he's whining for something that he can have or Mm -hmm. we can go do I try and get him to like okay use your words or I'll, I'll explain to him like all you had to do was say mommy can we go outside? Like trying to teach him to, you know, like use your words instead of this yeah. big, long, drawn out, like wine fest. So. Yeah. <laughs> now, and you said a lot of really great things. So one, when he, you know, let's say he can't have, he's asking for the fruit snacks and you know, he can't have it until after dinner, but you let, you're letting him know when the fruit snacks are, are going to happen and children thrive off of knowing what's going to happen. So love that you do that. Um, and really in that time, you know, you know, think about it. Like it's, it's something for us. It doesn't feel like in so many things like this don't feel like a big deal to us adults because we have this adult perspective with, you know, we, we see the world and we're worried about like bills and yeah. you know, a job and all these things. So when our you know, child is really upset about fruit snacks in the same way we're really upset about wondering if we're going to have a job or not the next day, then, you know, it can be sometimes hard to relate. But just knowing that, you know, that emotion to them is just as real as our emotions of you know, are we, you know, are we, are we going to have a job? You know, are we going to be able to pay the bills? Are we going to be able, am I going to be able to have, you know, alone time? I really wanted alone time. I was really looking forward to having this date night tonight. And then the baby can't babysitter canceled. Oh, that's so frustrating. Like that's, a, that's, that's a real feeling. And, you know, just, it can maybe reduce some of the ir- irritability that you're, um feeling to just know like you know think about like like has there ever been something that you really 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 wanted but couldn't have or knew that like it or you're gonna have to wait for it right you know is it is it maybe you wanting your podcast to be at two hundred thousand subscribers and you know want to and you know but you know it, it's not going to happen right now that, that you want and you yeah. know it's going to take a year or two to work up to it. is it finishing your degree like I have a good example are, go ahead yeah I had tickets to see Justin Bieber in September 2020 <laughs> and it got canceled or rescheduled and I still don't know when it's going to happen because of COVID so that's a perfect example <laughs> Yeah. 
Right. And for for Milo, like Justin, the, those Justin Bieber tickets, you know, that's the fruit snack, <laughs> yeah. right? Justin Bieber and, is a fruit snack. <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect. That's the tagline for this episode, yes. yeah. <laughs> Can you make that the title? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And so thinking about, and even in that, like you mentioned something else there that you know, you still don't know when it's going to happen, which is a little bit more frustrating, right? And even if you did know that like, okay, it's gonna happen 2023, right? Uh, okay, at least I know it's going to happen, but now I have to wait this, wait, you know, this length of time and that's gonna be a little bit challenging. And yeah, and so we're adults and we can handle it better and we can logically like, okay, we can logically rationalize why we have to wait until 2023 okay it is a big crowd we've been you know we want people to be safe and come up with all these logical rational reasons why you know we have to wait and that can ease our frustrations but for a two-year-old a three-year-old a four-year-old you know that part of their brain is still developing like just their ability to do that like physiologically in their brain their ability to access that logic and reasoning especially when they're feeling emotional and they're that emotional part of their brain is a lot more challenging or hard or darn near impossible sometimes. And so sometimes it is just the, so it is just the, like, I know like this is tough and almost kind of the same way as the, with the temper tantrum, just empathize. Like, I know, like, I know, like being there with it, like, ah, I know you really want, Though to go see Justin Bieber right now, you can you can filter it with Justin Bieber in your head, but like for them, it's fruit snacks. Like I know you really want those fruit snacks, and you can't have them. That's what must be so. That must be so tough for you. And you know things that can help, like you know, regulate the body are you know a hand on the back, right? Physical touch, physical touch, physical activity can be really regulating. Right, so a hand on the back, maybe even holding his hand can help regulate him. And it's not necessarily going to change his like wants. He may still want the fruit snacks, but it might help him calm down in the meantime, right? And for the things that he can't have, you're doing. I love what you're doing in terms of, you know, you said use your words, which is which is great, which is a great reminder. But I love what you said after that too, and giving him some words to use because you know how old is Miley? Is he three now, or is he still two? Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. So he's still like new to him, mm -hmm. right? Like he's only been using, you know, the English language for less than a year. And especially when we're in these emotional states, it's harder to use language. Like us as adults talk about it, like we get choked up. You know, that's how we say like when we're emotional, we get choked up. And it's hard for us to articulate how, you know, we're feeling to use words and that's just the way the brain works. And so for a child who's just learned, you know, language and how to, how to really even use language um, as, as a tool when he's something he's still learning. And then on top of this emotionally real tough thing for him of, you know, how I have this energy in, the, in my body and I want to go to the park and I'm inside and I've been stuck here for so long and it feels like years and Really, maybe it's been 30 minutes, but it feels like years. I really want to do so. And then, you know, I'm, I'm jumping on the couch and she says, I can't jump on the couch. And it's, oh, this is so hard for me. Like, you know, and he's not able to articulate all that, but that might be how he's feeling. And so you kind of getting down and, you know, another thing that can to, to help get his attention is acknowledge and validate how he's feeling and how he's wanting. Like that is like, one of the most effective things to get their attention um, and then to have then to have the conversation to say like, you really want to go to the park right now. Like you really want to go to the park. You really want those fruit snacks. And nine times out of 10, when you get down to their level and you acknowledge what they're wanting first, they will, they will, you know, a lot of times, you know, you'll see them kind of get like wide eyed and they're kind of looking at you and they're kind of like paying attention. Oh, wow. Wow. She's, see me right now yeah um and then it can be and then you're giving him like the script and the words to help him practice on what to say um and then he can say it and kind of right now he might be at the point where he's repeating you over time when he gets a little older and better with language you know maybe you can just prompt him with asking like okay so how could you ask 
about, you know, how could you ask to go outside? How could you ask for fruit snacks? How could you yeah. ask for X, Y, and Z? Um, once they had the language down a little bit more and a little bit more of that script, a little, a little bit more of the tools, um, and then they're, they're practicing and they're kind of building. But this happens over the course, like I said, not a day, not a week, not a month, over years, right? And how it plays out later in life, right? Now where, you know, you've practiced, you've, you know, not always shut Milo down every time he's, he's asking for something and you've encouraged him to speak up and you've shown him, you've talked about appropriate ways to express himself. And maybe as he gets older and he's, you know, he, he's eight and he's able to come up with supporting arguments, he's getting a little older and maybe he's, he's you know, doing proposals like for, for things he really wants. And, you know, maybe it's, I really want more screen time. Like, okay, I understand. My concern is that you, you know, you're, it's going to affect your sleep. Let's do a little bit of study. Let's track your sleep and see how it affects your sleep as you get. And, you know, he's practicing advocating for himself in more appropriate and effective and pro-social ways. So then when he gets in the workplace, you know, and there's something where he feels like it's unfair or he feels slighted or, or, or he's not getting, or maybe he's, he's taking over the workload and, you know, something's happening. He now has the skills, the practice, the words, the tools, the experience to advocate for himself and to, you know, ask his people, hey, can we have a meeting? Um, I'm, you know, I'm feeling there are some things I'm concerned about. And I'd like to just sit down and talk as opposed to what a lot of people do. And I, cause I work with adults and I work with, you know, lead, you know, I work with teachers and I also work with directors and a lot of adults and, and, and not just in education, but we'll just the hold it all in right until, until they blow up. Right. Or when they do, they're kind of lashing out and they, maybe they do have a really valid point, but because of, you know, they let their, their emotions got the best of them and they didn't know how to articulate themselves and advocate for themselves appropriately, the point gets lost in it. Yeah. And then they end up getting fired or quit and, you know, and those are its own kind of set of challenges. That's really quite amazing to think about, you know, it happening as a toddler and then how practice over their life can you know, make such a big difference in like somewhere like a workplace. That's that I like that lifelong lesson kind of. Um, When I was younger, when you were talking and you were saying, you know, how kids ask for things appropriately, I used to choreograph dances and perform them to my parents so that they would let me have sleepovers and stuff. (laughs) (laughs) What? That's a new one. How did that? I'm really? curious now. You, you choreographed dances. Like if my friend and I wanted to have a sleepover or like, oh, can, you know, so-and-so come over to the house for dinner, we would make a dance and perform it for our parents. And then at the end be like, can we have a sleepover? <laughs> <laughs> so how do you say no to that? Right? Yeah. So if any kids are listening, like this is a hot tip. <laughs> Yeah. And like, uh, that, that's really interesting too. And I always think about how people's like, I'm constantly analyzing people's like childhood and like how it plays out in their adult lives and curious about what they're doing now. And like, you know, no surprise that you are now <laughs> a performer, you know, whether it's <laughs> on TikTok, on Instagram, or on, on, on podcasting, but you know, and a big part of, you know, what you're, doing and I think kind of like what you like started with in this journey of kind of advocating and speaking out and like hey like this isn't something that's not talked about like I want to advocate about this thing I want to talk about this thing that I feel like is dismissed or not talked about or brushed under the rug and you know you know maybe you had practice in your life doing that and so it was something that you know, felt more natural and you felt inclined to do. And there's a little bit, a lot of people wouldn't take that, like, you know, I'm just going to stay like in my shell and be upset about it and be mad. Uh, and that has mental health and impl- like, you know, implications as well. Yeah. Right. But you went a completely different way and expressed yourself and advocate it instead of just holding it all in. And like, I, you know, I see your page, like how many people feel seen yeah. because you were able to advocate 
for yourself and talk about the things that you thought were important, where maybe even a lot of people who are consuming your content and listening to you don't maybe don't feel comfortable doing that and almost living vicariously through you. Yeah, no, for sure. It's always nice to hear other people talk about something and you're like, oh my God, me too. Like I felt the exact same way. And yeah, TikTok is a great place to like you get to make these 15 second little shows about, you know, a certain topic or a problem or yeah. So yeah, it all makes sense now. My whole life just makes sense now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. This was amazing. To bring it back to whining. Yeah. Oh, uh, go go ahead. Yeah. And just to bring it back to, you know, the whining that like it really does start with our, approach from you know from childhood when they're young and really the goal should be to help them express themselves um you know to their like to their truest form of 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 who they are right and so right right now you may be as a two and a half year old he's expressing himself through whining and you know our approach and our thought process can be okay so how can i help my child express themselves better Mm -hmm. right because right now he doesn't have the tools and we shouldn't expect for a two and a half year old or even a three-year-old or four-year-old um to have the tools to you know to to express themselves and really you know no matter what age there are people are in developmentally different places and so really just seeing your child where they're at developmentally um, and not just not just thinking about their age because some three-year-olds are really good at articulating, you know, how they're feeling and some three-year-olds really struggle. Some 29-year-olds are really good at articulating or are not really good at articulating how they feel and some, you know, 13-year-olds are, right? And you know, people become better and are able to develop in those areas when we give them opportunities to, Mm. and we create a safe space for them to practice those things, as opposed to what we adults typically have, you know, and kind of, you know, what I was raised on of just like, you know, don't talk back, like no back talk, right? You know, why are we as adults so afraid of a child responding and talking back to us You know, it should be more, I I understand the uncomfortableness of when it feels like disrespectful or, you know, you don't appreciate the tone, but that's a signal that, you know, maybe there needs to be either there an unmet need or untaught skill. Either there needs to be a, you know, a a conversation or practice, more practice in how to articulate themselves in better ways, or this child's probably really feeling this deep emotion and it's, and it's coming out. And the problem isn't really that thing that they said to you. The problem is that emotion that's probably deep inside and maybe something they shoved deep inside. And if you can get to the root of that, mm. then it's, it's, it's going to help with so many other misbehavior with your child. And important it's going to help them right there and and attention yeah it's funny like we gave the example of the fruit snack but I like how you pointed out like it starts out as being able to ask for things and advocate for themselves in that way like something simple like a fruit snack but it turns into then being able to verbalize how you're feeling like later on and being able to express themselves. Did I cut out? Hello. (laughs) Hi. Am I back? Uh, For a good part. (laughs) It's okay. I think the audio will still, it'll still catch it. out right now. Oh no. Oh geez. Anyways. Okay. Well, we're going to end it here, but I just, yeah, exactly. Um, (laughs) tell everybody where they can find you and, uh, thank you so much for talking to me.
I'm going to wait for it to come back. Good. Everything. Hello? Hi. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're, we're back. We were doing so good. It was. I know. You know. Okay. But what I heard is tell everyone where they can find me. Yeah. Okay. So you can find me um, on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, um, and I have a podcast of my own. And I also have a Patreon. So you can find me on TikTok, Mr. Chaz, Mr. Chaz. Uh, M-R-C-H-A-Z-Z, two spaces. You can find me on Instagram as Mr. Chaz, on Facebook as Mr. Chaz, space Mr. Chaz. You can find my podcast, Mr. Chaz's Leadership Parenting and Teaching Podcast. And if you would like one-on-one coaching um, and access to weekly sessions that I have with other um, experts who, you know, where you're able to ask your own questions, you can sign up for those services and at www.patreon.com forward slash Mr. Chaz. And that's where you can find me. And hopefully one day you'll be able to find, well, not hopefully, one day you'll be able to find the book that I write. Oh, yeah. In the process. That's my goal too. I started as well a book and I find it so difficult to sit and focus on writing. So difficult because like I said, we're doing so many different things that I'm scattered all over the place and it's hard to block off time to just sit and write, but I really need to do that for sure. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Our books are going to be side by side in a bookstore. Yeah. Okay. You just, <laughs> you, you just inspired me to start writing because we need to like, our books have to be out together. Yeah. 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 I, I totally agree. I yeah. totally agree. We'll go on tour. <laughs> <laughs> we got to hold our each other accountable. We are writing yes. this book yeah. because I, I, I struggle too, but I just know that it's something I have to prioritize and mm. make it a thing, put it in my calendar as I would any other mm-hmm. appointment and then just go ahead and do it. Yeah. Oh, totally. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with me and I'm going to stop recording. Cool. Thanks everybody.